Anyways, we have just researched the uh, MiG-32 Foxtrot. Uh, the MiG-32 is available for construction in our workshops. An empty, uh, empty hangar slot is required. It is a high-speed interceptor that can carry heavy avalanche missiles. It is a poor dogfighter as it does not have a cannon and cannot evasive roll. Now, evasive roll won't make any sense right now because... No one's seen uh, how the combat goes. I'm hoping we're going to find some alien ships pretty soon here. I'm also hoping that because it's on uh, Veteran, that we'll see something appearing faster. There we go. There's an alien ship. That is what I'm looking for. What do we got here? We've got a small size. We're going to intercept this. Now, unlike um, the original XCOM, you can use uh, multiple ships to intercept uh, a single ship at the same time, which I think is pretty neat. Um, I think three is the limit. Yeah, I am unable to select another one. So you could send three at a time uh, on whatever ship that you're going after. Now the combat um, for the ships here is far different from uh, what we're seeing in the original XCOM game, and we'll uh, we'll see that in a minute here. Let's just move this faster. Now this is a really cool little feature here, as you can tail until it uh, it gets over land, and we want to do that because we want to have a crash site so we can attack these aliens, see what they're all about. Um, so we're not going to engage right now, we're going to tail it. There we go, now we're going to engage it. Now we've only got 37 seconds of combat fuel, hopefully that's going to be enough. Also, um, as you can see, we've got this, uh, this target thing here, which is saying that a uh, local title system completely shut down. Uh, cause unknown kind of small to read for whatever reason. I would also like bigger text if you could. Thank you. Um, OCE something something. Anyway, this uh, if you click on it while we're not in a window like this, it will center on wherever that is happening. Um, not very important. Not the most important thing. However, usually when you see messages like this, it probably means that there's alien activity around that area, so you might want to get a base out there. Just just something to keep in mind. Right now, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and engage this. So, with this, uh, this fight thing here, which has really loud music, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear me very well over all this music. Um... It's, it's very, very different from XCOM. You actually get to control your jets, um, where they're going after, and all that kind of stuff. So we can actually see a uh, target for each of the jets here. Um, and you actually press uh, spacebar to resume the battle, or to move it away from the battle, all that kind of stuff. The other thing is, you have um, evasive rolls here, which will allow you to uh, move your jet away from uh, any kind of incoming projectiles, which is really cool. Um, the other thing you have is the afterburner, which is going to allow your jet to move a lot faster. However, you're going to consume a lot of fuel doing that. As you can see, we've all got low fuel here, so we don't want to be using any afterburners. Um, the other thing is you can retreat, so uh, if this jet happens to get really damaged, you can cause it to retreat and just use your other jets and hopefully uh, win the battle. Anyways, let's go ahead and start this out and I will show you how this works. So basically, it's pretty much automatic. You've got your uh, ships flying towards this. They will lock on to fire their missiles. And eventually, we're going to get the missiles firing. Now, if you look really closely here, you're going to see this nice little red thing here, which is uh, this ship firing on us. These missiles right here will normally take out a smaller ship like this, but um, if you want to avoid damage during the battle, you got to make sure that you uh, check out where they're firing at. So it looks like they're firing at this. We're going to have him do an evasive roll and hopefully dodge this. So he missed that, um, however, it looks like he shot uh, one of our other ships along the way. So I don't know 
how much you got of what I just said because pretty loud music there. So hopefully that works out. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and tackle our first mission here. Now, the other thing I, uh, I don't really like is... Well, one thing I don't like is the, uh, the ship we just destroyed is gone. That's not good. I was hoping for a crash landing, but apparently we just uh, totally crushed it. But um, anyway, what I was going to go over is uh, this intercept thing doesn't really work. Um, if you go ahead and you hit intercept and then you click on a location, it's going to uh, go to this, which is that that sounds just fine. That's what it should do. But um, normally when there's something on the map, you can just uh, click on it such as this, which is the uh, the title thing, but um, you can click on alien ships and it's going to uh, intercept stuff uh, without needing to click on this intercept button. So I don't really see a big need for this intercept button. I suppose the one thing you could do with it is uh, send your ships to a location, but I think it would be nice if um, I could just click on the map and do that. Or maybe at least have an option to turn that on and off to do something like that. Anyways, we're going to push the time forward again. Because we have nothing going on. We really need to get a ship going here. I was hoping that was going to be our first mission, but uh, no such luck. Somehow it got destroyed. I have not seen an alien ship get destroyed before. Yeah. There we go. A very small... Well, that does not sound like it is going to, uh... <laughs> to survive a missile attack. Alright, we'll tail this till it's over land. Alright, let's engage this. And hope that this time... We do not have any issues. Now, as you can see, because this is very small, it actually has uh, less of a wide range, whereas the uh, the smaller one, or the larger small, uh, actually had a wide range span to shoot. Um, whereas we have a straightaway shot, mainly like this little fighter here. We also seem to have a little bit more range than it does. However, it can move. It has got some serious movement. And it is shooting, and I am unable to dodge that because... Those are some crazy fast shots. I probably could have uh, managed to dodge that if I, uh, if I was trying really hard, but I was not trying really hard, and we once again do not have a crash site. I am truly disappointed so far that we do not have a crash site. I want a crash site, damn it! Alright, come on. Let's actually get something. That's one of the things that um, I disapprove of with this game is that it starts off really slow. Like, super slow. I, I was hoping for it to, uh, to be a little bit faster. Um, maybe in the final game they will uh, increase the speed at which uh, which things happen, but honestly, this is a little bit too slow for my tastes. I really think that they should speed this up. All right, let's see here. Is it not? shooting at me at all? Okay. 90%. Well, it says it crash landed. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're all low on, on fuel at this point. Finally, we have a crash site. That is what I've been looking for. It has taken way too much time for this crash site to appear. So let's go ahead and intercept this with the Chinook and have our first little battle. So as you can see this thing is like a blimp, it's really slow.
but it eventually gets there. So let's go ahead and engage this mission. So this is telling us that the load times are going to be shorter in the final version. Honestly, the load times for this game are not that long, so I don't know what they're talking about that this load time is going to be shorter, because it seems fine to me. Anyways, uh, Dropship Chinook is approaching the crash zone. Initial reconnaissance suggests that the UFO has sustained only minor damage, so expect stiff resistance. The primary objective of this mission is to capture extraterrestrial artifacts, so take care when breaching the UFO to avoid destroying valuable technology. Good luck, Commander. Bring your soldiers back alive. So we have uh, two possible objectives here. We can eliminate all alien units, which will uh, end the entire uh, thing here, or we can secure the UFO and hold it for five turns. I believe this also ends the mission. I have not done this second one ever before. I have only eliminated all units. So um, we'll see uh, at some points, I hope whether or not uh, securing the ship will do that. Now one thing I don't like is it is always going to start you in the same location on these maps. I really hope that um, it becomes different later on and it's a randomly generated location because every single mission I have ever played on this game has always started my ship in the same exact location. The maps are somewhat different in various areas but there's a lot of repetitiveness to this. I'm really hoping for some more uh, random generation from this. Something that I really like about the uh, Chinook is not only do you have this back area to uh, come out of with your vehicle, but you have two side doors so you can bring your soldiers out to the sides um, even while your vehicle is still in the ship. That's a, that's a really nice feature. Another nice feature is when you're clicking, it does not, uh, it does not cause your uh, vehicle or soldiers to move right away. Instead it's going to show you how many time units you're going to have when you approach that location. That is a really amazing feature because in um, XCOM you could move so far out there and then you would have no time units left and that was a real pain in the ass because well you might be dead because of it. One thing that I don't like about this is um, while you can create snapshots and normal shots and all that kind of stuff and you can reserve for it, um, if you have it reserved it will not allow you to shoot. In the, uh, in the original XCOM it will allow you to shoot that snapshot or, or whatever and consume those time units. In this you can't consume those time units until you turn off the reserve. Um, for some units, such as uh, this armored tank thing, you can't reserve units at all. It does not allow you to do it. You can click all you want, nothing happens. Um, with some of your soldiers, depending on the weapons that they have, it won't allow them to uh, reserve time units as well. So, something to keep in mind, it's it's a little bit different on how it works with reserving time units. Um, also, the map button is not implemented. Doesn't do anything. Um, also, your statistics do not do anything either. So right now, it's a little bit basic, but for the most part, uh, we've we've got a pretty solid, uh, pretty solid way of fighting here, which I like. Now. It is entirely possible that um, when I was playing, my ship was landing in the exact same place because I had not played enough yet, but um, I don't know. We'll find out. Also, really cool thing, you can crush walls with your, uh, with your vehicle here. Um, I believe your soldiers can actually vault over the walls. Um, which I think is what these are. Either that or this is just saying take cover here. I'm not quite sure. The other thing is um, this has sort of a, a Jagged Alliance kind of feel to, uh, to the way that it works. So you can select through your units 
uh, with the number keys, which is really neat. Um, and then you can also hit uh, Control and One, so you can select your uh, your tank or whatever, which is pretty cool. I, I really enjoy the uh, the selection system that they've got going on here. It, it's it's a very good combat system, especially for a game that is not completed yet. Anyways, let's start uh, start getting out here, casing the joints. I don't know why he's going over that way. Probably because this guy's in front of the door. There we go. I'm gonna actually. Uh, do this a horrible way. I'm going to be really, really risky, and I am going to uh, to have all of my units move out instead of uh, standing still. And um, this is probably a very bad idea because uh, I'm on veteran, but I really don't care. I am going to have fun with this, and we're going to be really risky. I'm gonna move this shotgunner up here. I would like him to go search this house here. The shotgunners are not going to be that great if they're out in the open, but if I can get them into buildings, they should be really awesome. Now, obviously, for those of you who have played XCOM, you probably remember that uh, there is no such thing as a shotgunner in the original XCOM game. It, it really gives you a completely different kind of tactical uh, advantage in the field. Because um, in the original game, you weren't thinking about uh, close quarters whatsoever. All of your weapons were uh, pretty much ranged. There was, there was no need to, to worry about range. So now there's a lot more tactics involved, and I really like that. Sound like we have something shooting out there. Someone's dying. So it looks like we got some farmers out there, and possibly one of the farmers died. Sorry, Farmer Joe. I tried to come here in time, but things just did not work out. Alright, so far, nothing in this place. That's kind of disappointing. Yeah, another farmer over here. Hey, we've got some kind of burning going on. I'm gonna guess that's where the ship crash landed. So we should definitely start moving some people over in that direction. We are putting them way out in the open, so this could be quite dangerous. I'm gonna have this guy over here. Yeah, see, he jumped right over that bush. I like that, that I can vault over things. That's, that's a neat little feature. That is a pretty neat little feature. Now, the other thing that I think is really cool is it actually describes what, uh, what toggling your, uh, your crouch would do. Um, so you actually have to use four time units whether you're crouching or standing up from a crouch. Um, you're going to be 40% harder to hit when you're crouching, and you also get 20% uh, boost to firing accuracy. However, because you're crouched, your soldier is going to be less capable of firing over obstacles and is 50% more likely to hit those obstacles. So um, that's really neat that they tell you that stuff, because in the original XCOM, you kind of had to figure that out on your own. I mean, I learned about it eventually, but it wasn't something I knew right off the bat. So definitely a very nice upgrade. We have not seen a single alien yet. I am quite disappointed at that. Alright, let's go ahead and move this baby up here. Maybe we'll see something. There's just nothing. This place is vastly empty. I'm surprised because the ship is over here, as far as I know. Unless they've started burning things themselves. Goddamn aliens. They're burning our people. Alright, so this looks like this is probably the edge of the map over here, so no need to investigate that. 
I'm gonna have my gunner come up here behind this tank and we'll uh we'll have him ready to back up the tank. Not that a tank really needs backup from a heavy machine gunner, but you know, whatever. The other thing that I like is you can see all of your uh, characters here so we can tell if we have time units left. That is a really nice feature because I don't have to go searching to see if someone else has to move. There's some serious fire going on. I'm truly surprised we have not seen uh, any aliens yet. Alright, shotgunner. You're not uh, well equipped for this, but I'm gonna move you up nonetheless. We still got nothing. The ship looks more like a base than a ship. Now, they better have bases in this game because, you know, if they leave that out, that is that is a vital part of uh, being an XCOM-like game. I know they took the inspiration from XCOM, but you have to have that base. I'm sure they do, though. This game is way too on the ball to not have that. Alright, let's have you hop over here. Let you sit there for a second. Oh, right. And we have this guy. I would love to be able to zoom in on this guy. Now, when you are uh, seeing aliens of any kind, it will automatically um, go to your ability to shoot, which I really like. I think that's pretty cool. And um, you can tell how much percent you have for uh, accuracy there and uh, how much you're going to be using up to uh, take the shots. Now, I'm not going to shoot with this tank because I've got a sniper over here and this sniper probably can get a better shot. So I want to save a snap here. Let's see, so he could get to here. Let's bring him here because I want him to be able to turn toward the alien. We'll go back to none. He's got a 23% chance. That's not very good. But let's try it. That was way off. He did not even graze that alien. Alright, so much for the uh, sniper here. That is too bad. He can't even duck either. Okay, let's go ahead and try and shoot with this tank here. Actually, you know what? We will pull this tank up a little bit more. 38. I don't want 38. 42 is good. Not quite. We have enough for one more shot. Alright, we hit him once, but that is certainly not enough to take him down. Hopefully he'll be attacking our tank, because that thing is up front. We could probably launch a rocket in his direction. I don't know that that would be a particularly good idea, considering that this thing might get shot. It's kind of interesting, it seems to be saying that that's in my path. And uh, it would be a bad idea to do that. Alright, let's go ahead and reserve this. Let's see how far I can manage to get. That will give me 29 left. I need 24. Uh, let's try here. 32. 25. Yeah, we'll go with this. Alright, that turns me towards him. And let's turn the snap off so we can actually shoot. I have a 21% chance. Let's see if we can hit the building behind him. Yeah! Uh-oh! Ooh, he got hit hard! Alright, so we got another alien up here. This one is still not dead, surprisingly. 
We shot him with a massive shot, but nothing. And you are basically out of units. So are you. We are in some serious danger here. And my shotgunners do not have any backup weapons, so... This is going to be bad news. Which is fine. This is fine. I would like it to be very difficult. I think our uh, Rocketeer here is going to end up uh, getting himself killed. We'll have him duck, and hopefully he can manage to uh, to avoid a shot. Probably not. Probably not. Anyway, we have this guy here. I imagine there's not going to be anything up there, so... I'm going to... well, you can come out this front door. You're probably not going to be able to hit now. I didn't think your shotgun would be long range enough for that. I will leave you on the other side of this door so you're out of sight. And that is all we've got. This is going to be a painful... <laughs> He got our tank. These aliens do not mess around.